Hello, good people. This is the second part of Vision Transformer video. And in this one, I'll be covering the most important aspect, which is attention. I'll first try to build up some intuition on what it is, why it is helpful, and then we'll see what's going on inside the attention block in Transformers from a VIT perspective and how an implementation of it would look like. I had already covered the patch embedding block of VIT in the previous video. Um, its link should be somewhere in the top right now. So in case you haven't seen that, I would suggest to first understand that. So the first thing that we'll try to understand is what exactly is attention. And for now, we'll try to not bring any math into it. So this is Google's definition and pretty much is on point. To attend to something is to take notice of something. But from a transformer architecture perspective, attention is the block that aims to do two things. First, figure out what is relevant for an entity from everything that is in its context. And second, fusing the understanding of relevant context into the input's representation. The above statements will have more meaning once we try to understand why context matters and why focusing on context might lead to anything worthwhile. So when you see this word, you would build some perception of what is the season that I'm referring to. But you shouldn't have much confidence in that interpretation. I could be talking about seasoning some dish or seasons of some TV show or the weather for that matter. But the moment I give you some of the neighboring words, all that ambiguity vanishes. Same for this word pool. Could be the game, could be mean or max pool, given it's a video with connection to deep learning or something else. Again, neighboring words clarify. So in both these cases, once I showed the context, the meaning of the word I was referring to became very clear. These examples above had words which had different usages, but that's not a necessity for context to become important. Like this sentence, it's very difficult to tell what the word it here is referring to. But the moment you see the next set of words, you have no problem in figuring that out. And if you're trying to build a model which predicts the object that the word it refers to, so let's say you would take the word representation for it and fit it to an FC layer. So wouldn't you want the word its representation to have some understanding of the word wide or happy in it? And that way becoming easier for the classifier to tell whether it is referring to chicken or street. So this is exactly what the second responsibility would have done. Fuse in understanding of the context in the input's representation. But this video is on VIT. So let's try to look at some image examples. Now, whatever your understanding of what these two images are, I'm 100% sure it would undergo a drastic change the moment I do this. Unless, of course, you were expecting it. But see, in the left image, you must focus on the person and the fact that the person is sitting on this object to figure out that this is not something you can eat. So here, the useful context was entirely different object. And on the right, it's a specific part of the same object. But focusing on the jack changes what this object represents for you entirely. Hopefully, these examples would have given you some insights into why contextual representation is super beneficial. So now that we have some intuition of what the need for attention is, let's see what exactly is going on within these attention blocks. So the first responsibility of this block was computing relevance. Attention block computes this relevance using a scaled version of dot product. For our patch example, assume we want to compute relevance of things in the context of patch one with patch one. And here context of patch one is basically all patches, even patch one itself. And just to remind ourselves in our patch embedding video, we had already seen that these patches are now D-dimensional, where D is the dimension at which all layers of transformer will operate. So relevance between patch one and say patch four would be the dot product of patch one representation and patch four representation, which makes sense as it is giving the fields of computing cosine similarity between patch one and patch four. But we don't use the patch representation as it is. We apply a transformation using three matrices, WQ being the query matrix, WK being the key matrix, and WV being the value matrix. WQ represents the transformation applied to the patch which we are trying to compute relevance to. In this case, that is patch 1. And what we will get after this transformation is called the query. WK represents the transformation applied to the patches in the context. So here it will be all patches from patch 1 to patch 4. The result post that transformation will be called keys. WB is actually fulfilling the second responsibility, so we'll come back to it later. Now to compute relevance between patch one 
and all patches in the context. We'll use query representation of patch one and keys representation of all patches. So the first question that we should ask is why even transform? Why can we not use the existing representation as it is? And to answer that, let's go back to our requirement. Our requirement was to find relevance between patch one and for now say patch four. But we did not specify what basis or what criteria we want to compute this relevance for. And it could be that our existing representation space is not conducive enough to compute relevance for this basis. So say as a completely hypothetical criteria, I want patches which are diagonally opposite to each other to be more relevant to each other. Now there's no reason why the existing patch representation would be modeled in such a way that two diagonally opposite patches will end up having higher cosine similarity in that representation space. Hence, it makes sense that we apply these transformations to have the network learn two things. What criteria of relevance is important for this data set and how to transform the patch representation so that computing the dot product in this transformed space leads to a higher similarity between patches which have higher relevance based on this criteria. The head dimension here is the dimension of the space in which the patches will be transformed and it's the same for Q, K as well as B. So to find the relevant context to patch one, we'll multiply patch one representation with WQ to get query representation Q1 for patch one and all the patches in context with WK matrix to get the keys representation K1 to K4. Since WQ, WK and WB are all D cross head dimension, so Q and K will be of the same dimension, allowing the dot product to be feasible. One aspect to note here is that because WQ and WK are different, so patch one might not always be relevant to patch one itself. It could be or could not be, again, based on what our criteria of relevance is. For color similarity case, extremely relevant. But for seeing if query and key are left and right of each other, not at all relevant. Finally, computing relevance for the attention block is as simple as computing dot product between the query and each of these keys. We also add a scaling term in the denominator. The authors of the original transformer paper talk about this, where they mention that this scaling prevents the dot product to grow large in magnitude and hence the name scaled dot product attention. So we do this for all Q1 and KI pairs and we get these four values, each of which is a score of how relevant KI is to Q1. Then to convert this to a distribution that sums to one, for reasons that will be clear in a moment, we do softmax. Now I mentioned V matrix does the second responsibility, which is that now that you have used query and key to identify a relevant context, what representation of this relevant context should be fused into the input representation, which is patch one here. To do that, we simply multiply the value representation of all the patches with these normalized relevance values. All we are doing here is scaling up those value representations which belong to keys which were more relevant to the query and scaling down the less relevant ones. And after summing all of these, we have the contextual representation for this query patch one. This is simply like a weighted combination of patch value representation with weights being the relevance to query Q1 under the basis of relevance that these WQ, WK, WV transformation matrix represent. But we also need to do the same for all patches. So for patch two being query, patch three being query and patch four being query. And we can do all of that using matrix multiplication. And multiplying the matrix of patch representations with WQ, WK and WV will give us the QKV vectors each of the shape four cross head dimension. Dot product then would give four cross four, where each cell i comma j of this matrix indicates relevance between query patch i and key patch j. Multiplying this with V, which was also four cross head dimension, will give us a four cross head dimension matrix. This matrix is the context representation for all four patches. To reiterate, to get each row I of this matrix, we used patch I's query representation and all patches key representations to compute the relevance. Finally, did a weighted combination of all patches value representation using these relevance weights. So all of this was single attention block. Now let's progress towards making this a multi-head attention block. And in some sense, you already know everything there is to know about it. And you will realize that soon. 
However, first let's again go back to talking about why. Why have this multiple heads of attention rather than just a single head that we saw earlier? So remember we talked about relevance and there being a basis or context for relevance. But in reality you could desire to compute relevance on multiple factors, right? Like for language, maybe one factor of relevance could be pronoun and noun relationship. So Bob went to the store and he bought apples and oranges. So relevance between Bob and he. Maybe other could be looking at the action that the noun is performing. Likewise for image, if your goal was to detect this object, color similarity between this patch and this patch would give you some sense of the boundary of object. Whereas positional similarity between this patch and this patch could indicate that this is a boat and not a car. And these multiple heads then also allow our input to be richer. Like in the case of this image and in the earlier sentence. Bob's representation has gender information in it because it has attended to he and as well as action that Bob was performing. Hence this richer representation and feasibility of attending to information from different representations as each head will have their own QKV. This makes multiple heads a better alternative than single head. So now let's assume you have eight heads. Then you will not have one but eight different WQ, WK and WV matrix. Each of these 24 matrix will be of shape D cross head dimension. We will multiply 4 cross D patch representations with these WQ, WK, WV matrices to get 8 QKV representations, one for each head. Each of these will then end up being 4 cross head dimension. And these will hold the representation for all four patches. All of this is exactly same as before, just that we are doing it for eight heads together. Like before, our QK transpose will give us four cross four matrix, but now we'll have eight such matrix. And multiplying that with the respective Vs will give us the context representation for all patches for all heads. So we'll get eight four cross head dimension matrix, one for each head. We can then concatenate them together to get a matrix whose first dimension is 4 and second dimension is 8 times the head dimension and project via FC layer to our transformer dimension D. So this FC layer will have a weight matrix W of 8 times head dimension cross D. This output projection is essential as it ensures that we get back the context representation in the same dimension as our original patch representation. And we'll see in the third part of this series how we end up using it. But we don't really need 24 of these weight matrix. We can actually do all of this using one single weight matrix W. Let's still stick to our concrete example of eight attention heads. So we can have a weight matrix of D cross 24 times head dimension, 24 because three for QKV and eight for each attention head. And when we multiply the patch representation four cross D, you will get four cross 24 times head dimension. We can split this into three parts to get combined Q, K, V matrix for the eight heads. Then we can split each of these into eight parts to get Q, K, V matrix for each head. Post that, we do exactly the same things. Q, K transpose gives us our eight matrix of relevance weight. Again, each being four cross four. Multiplying with V gives us eight four cross head dimension matrices. And then concatenating and projecting this joint head representation to our transformer dimension. We unpacked a lot of things here. So let's look at each of these steps one more time, but this time getting a variable number of heads into the picture. Our input to this block would be four cross D. In fact, it would be number of patches cross D. The W for getting our QKV will be D cross number of heads into three into head dimension. The first thing that we will do then is multiply with this W weight matrix. And what we get as output is number of patches cross three times number of heads times head dimension. Splitting the last head dimension into three parts gives us the QKV, each being number of patches cross number of heads into head dimension. Split each head and rearrange the dimensions to make the shape of QKV as number of heads cross number of patches cross head dimension. Computing QK transpose then gives number of heads cross number of patches cross number of patches. This was our four cross four matrix that we saw earlier. We can now multiply this by V to get number of heads cross number of patches cross head dimension. And then we can permute and reshape to get number of patches cross number of heads into head dimension, which then gets projected to our transformer dimension via the FC layer. We'll divide our attention block implementation in three subparts. The first part will be projecting from patch representation D 
to get QKV for all heads together. The second one would be splitting these to get each head's QKV and computing the scale dot product attention. And finally, we would compute the weighted value V and project it back to D. Let's look at all of this in code now. This will be our attention module class. Same as patch embedding and in it, we'll get values from the config like number of heads, head dimension, EMB underscore dim, which is our transformer layers dimension D. We also add dropout for regularization. So this is just that probability. Attention underscore dim is the product of heads and head dimension. This will be used to decide the dimensions of our linear layer, which we initialize next. So QKV underscore projection is that single W matrix, which will be the weight parameter of this linear layer. And like we had seen it, it would be from D to three times number of heads times the head dimension. Three for the joint QKV, number of heads as we need each head's QKV, and each is of shape head dimension. Output underscore projection is the final FC layer, which takes the joint attention values and projects it to D dimension. Let's go to our forward method. The first thing we do is project and then split the QKV matrix. These would be all heads together. Since our output shape of projection was three times the attention dimension variable, so this split here would give our QKV. Up till now, they are the combined QKV for all heads. And here we are just rearranging and splitting them so that for each head we have separate QKV. Notice that now the second dimension is the number of heads and third is the number of patches. Using the rearrange method from ENOPS, what we are doing here is splitting the last dimension using the number of heads to separate out the representation for each heads and then permuting the number of heads to be our second dimension and number of patches to be our third. That way, we can do QK transpose to get the attention weights for all heads. This section is now going to compute the scale dot product attention, which is just doing QK transpose and scaling with the square root of head dimension like we saw earlier. And then softmax over the relevant scores. We also apply a dropout, but again, that's for regularization only. And here, this matrix multiplication is computing the weighted values matrix. Its final shape will again be number of heads cross number of patches cross head dimension. And lastly, we will concatenate the values of all heads and project it back to our transformer dimension D. The way we are doing this is again rearranging and bringing number of heads inside as the third dimension and moving the number of patches to be the second dimension. This is so we can then bring the last two dimensions together to get the joint context representation for all heads. Since this is exactly the shape that our output projection layer accepts, feeding it to that will give back our number of patches cross D output, which is the context representation for all patches. And after that, we just do a dropout and that's it. That's all there is to an attention block. Hopefully with this, everything that's going on in the attention block of VIT is more clear. And if not, do let me know in the comments what's still unclear and I'll try to answer it there. In the next part, we'll build our entire vision transformer. Then we'll see what our model is learning after we have trained it on our toy dataset. So see you there. And until then, keep liking the videos and subscribe the channel if you haven't already.